Good? Okay. Um, hello, welcome everyone. We are here for another fascinating Beit Abulafia class. Um, amazing lessons that we're going to take away from today to really start our week off well. Jason Kaplan, hello, welcome, thank you. Hello. Around these parts. <laughs> Shavua Tov. And we have a super extra special guest today, Yechezkel Abu Afia, who is actually related to the Rabbi Abu Afia that we have been talking about. This is our big fat 10th session, and it is amazing. We are super excited that we've been able to come this far and have incredible guests like Yechezkel on today. So welcome to you also, Yechezkel. We're so happy that you've joined us. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Yay, likewise. Um, I think it's actually really fitting that you're joining us on this one as we about to, as we're about to enter the month of Elul, um, and everybody's really going to be doing some introspection, some recentering, some balancing. So it is ideal timing that you're joining us today to really help us get into the right mindset over the next you know 39, 40 days here as we prepare ourselves mentally. Um, Jason, if you wouldn't mind, share a little bit of background about Yechezko with everybody today. Great. Well, thank you, Shoshana. Thank you for hosting. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, this is the 10th episode. This is incredible mm -hmm. mix of uh, world premier jazz artists, spiritual leaders from different uh, religious groups. And this is our first time hosting a descendant who is currently teaching the teachings of Rabbi Abraham Abulafia, Heskel Yosef Abulafia. Welcome from Sfat, Israel, where it's 8 p.m. over there. And mm -hmm. I want to thank all the guests for joining. We usually have three to 10, 12 guests join. Then we have two or 300 views. Uh, afterwards, we really are making an impact, bringing the light of Abulafia and now his descendants uh, to this program. This is a very special episode. So in brief for the introduction, I generally just do a research through Google of who's out there doing Abulafia projects. And I found Yeheskel Yosef Abulafia. Let me read you the bio, then we'll talk a little bit more about how we connected. Uh, from his website, which is abulafiameditation.com, Yeheskel's journey began. Uh, ten years ago, on a birthright trip to Israel, upon visiting Sfat, where now he's living, thank God, he felt an immediate connection to the place and decided to begin, uh, it began exploring the mystical teachings he learned to be associated with the Holy City. Uh, when he was exploring both Kabbalah and his own heritage, he was able to trace his lineage to the 13th century Kabbalist Rabbi Abraham Abulafia of blessed memory. After studying yeshiva in both the United States and Israel, Yesko returned to Sfat, where his journey began. Him and his wife, Mia, have decided to dedicate their lives to living and sharing with others the endless beauty of Torah and life itself. Uh, just one more sentence from the website. Like the original Abulafi, Hesko believes that all Jews have the potential of reaching a state of prophecy. Moshe Rabbeinu himself wrote this in Devarim, the book of Numbers, with that all the Lord's people were prophets that the Lord put his spirit upon them. So this is the uh, goal to bring as many possible people as possible to the higher levels of consciousness, creating a world more a, a world, excuse me, of more enlightened, self-aware people. So again, welcome Yechezkel, and we're so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, thank you for the beautiful introduction. But uh, yeah, I, I remember you reaching out to me uh, and on social media, and uh, your name was like Abu Lafia. Also, I was like, is that a cousin? <laughs> <laughs> Spiritual cousin. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, it was, it was great talking to you. And, and you know, we, we've had a few sessions, me and you and, and Shalom from Shefa Ben, um, you know, talking about what you're doing with Abulafia technique and what I'm doing. And, and uh, you know, thank God we're, we're starting to collab. Hopefully I can meet you in person here in Eretz Israel. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a great Agree. We're very excited about this and this program where we're going to really dive deep. I, I want to uh, thank you again for joining, especially Sfat, different time of the day. And with that, um, the, the way that this program has been so successful is the guidance of Shoshana. So again, Shoshana, thank you for hosting. And we'll let you start with the uh, the questions that are intriguing to you. Thank you. It's it's truly my pleasure to, to join along with you guys. It's a nice collaborative effort. So I'm just happy to be here. Thank you. Um, let's talk a little bit more about your background, Yefesco, before we get into some fantastic Beta Balafia and meditation chats. Um, tell us about a little bit more about your path to observance and to Israel. And then I want to fast forward a lot after that. Um, and I know that you, you've you been doing Torah teaching in a super fun way with children, something with um, super tzaddik. So talk about that, because that's really a fun children's aspect that we like to share before we get into the other stuff that's maybe a little bit higher level. Cool. So yeah, from Parkland, Florida, originally, 
um, raised totally non-observant whatsoever. I, I was reform. I had a bar mitzvah. And then after that, totally nothing. Um, went to college. I was really into film. Um, I, I wanted to become an entertainer, like kind of like Adam Sandler, you know, and uh, I was, you know, doing improv and doing auditions. And then I went on Birthright. And when I came to Birthright, like to Israel on Birthright, it blew my mind away. Um, I was having spiritual experiences, especially in Spot and in Jerusalem. And I had to connect back to my roots, um, especially when I started learning about Avram Abulafia. Uh, I was so intrigued. I, I just had to get to know him. Um, and my, my grandfather, he was raised observant, and then he went off when he was like 13. And um, so he, he knew a bit history, so I had to go to him. He's the patriarch of the family. His name's Oscar Abulafia. Um, and yeah, he's he's taught me so much to about him. And then I had to go to rabbis and learn about his techniques, um, which, you know, Jason is, he's doing certain techniques through Abulafia, but with music, which is amazing because, you know, they say that uh, with prophets needed musicians to receive prophecy. So it definitely goes hand in hand. Um, like most of my friends here in spot are all musicians. Um, so basically with the supersonic and Baba Silly and all the fun shows that I, I'm teaching, um, I thought that it would be amazing to take entertainment and Judaism and mold it together. And then you could teach, you know, like on a simple level, uh, the highest um, wisdoms ever, you know, just like little bits and pieces and you could experience it. So for the kids, I have two little babies, Baruch Hashem, um, you know, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And so I'm learning a lot from them. And I was developing fun characters for them. And, you know, so, I, and then once like ideas started flowing, I told my friends who helped me, like he makes movies as well. And we just started, we're like, okay, let's, let's create something for the children. So, um, you know, I don't know if you saw Super Sadek. It's It's kind of based off of like, Superman and and Dragon Ball Z and all these fun like superheroes that kids watch and make my own character. Um and then Bob Vasily was for the smaller kids, you know, like two years old. <laughs> and so uh, I did like a spin-off of Blippy in a Jewish way. So yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love that you're starting so young to to connect with these children and give them nice inspiration to lead a Torah learning life. That's fantastic. For the future. Yeah, no, 100%. Exactly. So you got to start young. I love it. Um, when you said that you learned that who your ancestry was and that you were distantly related, uh, what did that feel like when you discovered, wait a second, oh my gosh, this lineage that I have and everything that this man that you later learned was able to provide the world, what did that feel like to you? I, it's hard to describe. Um, I just I just felt the need to get closer and learn more. And uh it, it felt like something was there that was like missing and I needed to, to find the answer and and also learn his techniques and see what he's really like talking about. I felt like it, it was also like, because it's, it's my family, I need to spread it. I need to spread my lineage everywhere. Um, so God willing, you know, I, I'm, I'm like in the process of becoming a rabbi and I, I want to bring it to the next level and start doing retreats. And, and helping, you know, Jewish people get to their roots, not only the Jews, like he, Avram Abulafia taught the whole world, all the nations. Um, he was very into, you know, speaking about God with Christian mystics and uh, Islamic mystics. And, you know, he did whirling also with the Sufis. And uh, he just, he, he was just a very mystical, positive guy who, who loved prophecy and God and wanted to bring the redemption, which... You know, that's, I think it's, we're in the times now that now his teachings really need to come out and uh, we could create world peace together, like through prayer and meditation and uh, these techniques bring peace and healing. So, you know, we have a lot of trauma throughout the years, especially as being a Jew, you know, the Holocaust, we all have to heal together. So, I I, I yes, no. Yes, please, God. <laughs> All of that is answered sooner than later. Um, okay. So, Jason, so what's interesting is that, like Yechezkel's sharing, everything is still relevant today that we've learned from Rabbi Abulafia. 
So tell us from 800 years ago, how is it that this man's teachings and everything that we can take away from him are working so well for us today if we apply them in the right way? That is a great question, Shoshana. And I think that's what inspired me to make this uh, interview series and, and have it so dialogue based with you leading it because it is such a great conversation. I can't believe that an individual rabbi from 800 years ago is so relevant. I think it confirms to me that he had prophecy because it's almost like he saw the future. When, when he first started writing, he was met with a lot of opposition. And actually, if I put my, myself in the shoes of the rabbis opposing him, I kind of understand. He, he was so in a different time and um, and he was talking about Jews connecting directly to God and feeling prophecy. And he he was referring to Mashiach as a, an inner level of our own consciousness. And people kept thinking that he was saying that he himself is the Mashiach. And he was he kept repeating in his books very very clearly. I'm talking about a certain level inside of us. And he read he read the whole Torah literally and allegorically both together. So you can imagine. In, in 800 years ago, people said, this sounds dangerous. I think to, to now, to me, it sounds so applicable. So more to the point of your question is, I think he's so applicable just for what Yeheskel said, is that when we study, and we'll get into this with Yeheskel about the permutations and the meditation and breaking things down to letters, a Muslim can do that, a Christian can do that, an atheist can do that. There, there, there's no limit with Abulafia. And um, in my own journey, also growing up in, in a liberal, um, you know, sort of secular world, which um, again, I understand why Jews did that. Um, because I think when I came to religion, it felt like, well, God and prophecy is over there and direct connection to God's over here. And that's really just for the limited few. Um, it's not as satisfying, honestly. <laughs> and I think, you know, we're not talking about prophecy in terms of prophecy for where's the nation going and what Yeshayahu said and, and um, you know, the prophet Yehezkel said, right? We're, I think we're talking about what I call prophecy katan, nuvua katan, like the, the prophecy of feeling the direct connection to God. So I, I think people are saying now religion is interesting and traditions of Judaism are interesting, but I don't want to be one step removed from God. I'd like to have a direct experience to God to almost confirm to myself these truths are evident and real. I think I think that's what's so so appealing about Abulafia. Yeah, Yechazka, do you have anything to add to that, maybe from a, a different personal perspective? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I think Abu Lafi was talking about this this deep, um, you know, relationship that you you could have with somebody. Uh, so that's with the divine, and it goes deeper and deeper. It's very, it becomes very intimate, and that that's I think really true prophecy when you know you really connect with the divine light, and and you have your own personal experiences, and the love just keeps on going deeper and deeper. Um, so that's, I believe he, re he reached that he reached like, you know, some other cultures call it Nirvana or, or, you know, he, he just reached high level levels of consciousness. And that's what he was talking about when he said Mashiach, he, he is Mashiach. He re received the light of Mashiach, which, you know, there will be a global time when everybody will receive that light together, but, uh, you could, you could receive it now. You know, even Yaakov Avinu, he, he was able to receive it. And he wanted to reveal, like Jacob wanted to reveal to all his sons, the 12 tribes, when the ultimate redemp redemption was going to happen with the final Mashiach. And he wasn't able to reveal it because, you know, it's, it's a, a unique journey for everybody. And there will be a global time, and that's all up to God. But, you know, right now, everybody could, you know, connect themselves to Hashem. All you have to do is look up and start talking and... Then there's techniques, and there's not just permutations. There's so many different names and shemot, names of God that you could connect to, and each one has a different energy. And um, it really de de depends on what your intentions are. And uh, just one simple intention, just breathing and thinking love, that that already radiates all this beautiful light. So um, I mean, there's there's so much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. And uh, I'm super excited because in, in a few minutes at toward the end of our session today, you're going to lead us all in a meditation, which again, it is just the perfect way for everybody to start the week to come off, you know, Shabbos really nicely and really dive in to everything that we're about to, you know, hit us with in the week ahead. Um, but first, let's go back to Jason for a minute, because I want you to sort of explain 
your approach to Abu Afia and meditation with your permutations. We can share the four notes with everyone because then Yechezkel, you've got a different approach that you take to meditation. So I want you to explain that to us before we actually do what you're going to um, instruct us in. So Jason, talk about your permutations. Great. Thanks, Shoshana. Yeah. So, so for me, when I see the permutations of Abulafi, and I have this farm up here, and there are the four Hebrew letters. Oh, there you go. And, nice. and Yeskel's <laughs> holding them too. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and he has the diagrams in there of the four Hebrew letters that are permutated 24 possible ways. And so I, I saw this in a jazz manual that said you could take four notes and practice them 24 different ways. So I started saying, oh, let me let me combine the two together. That's that. That was the insight for me. So actually, I brought my I got my guitar here. So I would take an olive, a bet, a gimel, and a dalit, and I'd make those the four notes. And then I would say it out loud: abadagi or abagadi, abadiga. And I would start practicing all 24 permutations, and then I would just let the music take off. So you just do that enough. Okay, that's kind of road practicing. And then I would make it. Let it, as, as, as Jehaskel is saying, like, let the flow come or have an intention or have some type of thought and just let it. And at that point, I'm not really thinking about it. And it's really beautiful not to actually think, you know, and go into this other mode and this other universal language. So, and that's, and that's what I really enjoy and love. But again, I, I can't see that that's a, a totality of what is Abulafi. So I started looking out into the world and we're going to hear soon from Yeheskel about really focusing on the letter and, and all of his beautiful meditations that you can find on his website and on YouTube about really making it a structured and guided meditation. So that, that's my music insight, but I'm excited to hear from Yeheskel and all the people listening and your, uh, yourself, of course, Shoshana, listening about other methods to do this. This is the expanding the circle of what we think about for Abulafi meditation. Yeah, so you guys can share with us why meditation in all of its different forms is so vital to humans. And then talk to us about how you got to the approach and the method that you use that you teach people with today. Well, I think with meditation, it just helps align ourselves. Um, you know, every day we have to realign, every moment really. Uh, Rabbi Nachman talks a lot about starting anew every single day, every moment, if you need. Um, and it's it's all about renewal. So there's always new energy constantly, and you have to just keep aligning yourself to the moment. And you can see in the Chagim, like it, throughout the holidays, there's different themes and energies throughout it. And there's always different meditations along with it. We just had Tishba of, you know, the morning of the temple. And there were special meditations, actually, to meditate. Um, to sweeten the the judgments and and to to bring hope and love and into the world and uh, so you know like God gave us basically these um, these keys and we have we have like times like you know we we live in a time that like at literally every moment is now and so you, like through meditation you can connect to the now that you're in that in that moment. So that's why they say focus on the breath. And then because breath is always flowing, it's always going, you don't have to think about your breath. It's just constantly going. And that's why we're alive. Um, and it's this life, uh, life force that flows through us. And once you start connecting to your breath, then you can connect to the moment of now. And um, then from there, you could raise your consciousness. You could, uh, if, if there's something blocking you, you could remove those blockages. If you have anxiety, you could, you could, uh, you know, fill yourself up with light and, and faith and amuna, and, and then that anxiety will go away. So it's very, very healing. Um, you could use meditation for so many different things, for manifestation. A lot of people do this where they uh, visualize something, what they want, what they, what they want it to achieve. Um, and so it really depends on your intention. Um, if you have something that you need to heal yourself, if you have some type of fear, so meditation is very beneficial. Um, I think, you know, even doctors, they have many studies on meditation and uh, giving a placebo and, and doing a certain exercise and, and actually it healed them. And instead of the medicine, th there's, there's many different studies, um, but I think that in the past, our sages really knew this. 
and there are secrets from from all the way back to Mount Sinai. And you know, Avram Abulafia was very adamant about like this is not my teachings; these are the teachings of the prophets. And he was just bringing them back, you know, it's because we, you know, he was he was in exile for a while, like uh, about a thousand years, I think. He was in the the Jewish people were in exile since the the um the destruction of the second second temple and now we're two thousand years almost and but at the end of days prophecy comes back and you know when people think prophecy they they think of seeing the future or certain things like that but that's just a side product so actual prophecy is just connecting with the source of everything and so when you do that then okay you might see bits and pieces of the future and you know like you might get uh, visions and see angels, but that's that's not like the go to. The go to is to connect, and um, and we all need to connect together. And I think that's why God created internet so we could all really connect and communicate with each other. And I think we're really living in the end days, which is really the days <laughs> that everyone's been looking forward to, and we're all going to go back to the Garden of Eden, whatever that means. Uh, but it's it's all going to be peace and there's no more war and we'll have abundance. We literally see with science now that we have abundance. So we could literally heal world's hunger. We could, we could do it. We have the resources. So meditation is very, very important. And the way how I was able to form my type of technique was, you know, going straight into Abu Lafia is very advanced. Um, so I wanted to water it down for a child to understand. And um, so I, I, I took many different techniques from Avram Abulafia and also different rabbis that were inspired by Abulafia, such as Rabbi Moshe Korovero, the Ramak, who basically kind of took Ab Abulafia's teachings out of harem because um, he, was, he was excommunicated, as, as uh, Jason was talking about earlier. Um, and... The Ramak was very respected, and Chaim Vital as well, who was, you know, both the Ramak student and the Arizal student. And uh, and they basically brought Avram Abulafia's name in the good light and said, this is for sure holy, and uh, it's okay to learn his teachings. And after that, like, Abulafia inspired, you know, the Rashash and, and the Chida and, and so many great Mekubalim. Um, and so his teachings are very unique. And he has many teachings, not, not just uh, the permutations. He also has different meditations as in uh, body movements. Um, there's also like each, each Hebrew letter is, is uh, another, you know, posture. So, uh, I have a friend who teaches Kabbalah yoga, which is based off of Avram Abulafia's teachings. It's very That's cool. Awesome. <laughs> you check out KabbalahYoga.com. It's, it's yeah. amazing. And um so that's one technique. There's also technique with uh, being a scribe. If, if you know any sofers or scribes, they, they take their, their pen, their, their quill, and, and they start doing the permutations like that. Uh, they start writing it out, and they go into a type of trance if you do it correctly. There's also breathing techniques. There's head movement techniques. Um, so many and i keep finding more <laughs> you know it's it's just like endless and uh and, and then there's the spherot the tree of life meditations um and it's it's all it's all the same language it's all kabbalah and a lot of it stems from abu lafia and then i also take bits and pieces from like the Baal Shem Tov, um who is more emotional and taking your emotions and putting the motions to the right places um and yeah, so I, I basically watered it down and try to simplify it. And some people can't meditate on Hebrew letters per se, yet it takes time. It's like a muscle. So you have to, for visualization, you have to practice. But almost everybody that I've talked to could at least picture some type of light. So uh, when we do the meditation, I, I will, we'll be working with a light. And um, yeah, let, let's continue the questions. And we, yeah, we keep... so... Yeah, yeah, no, this is good. So when you were sort of discovering how to make it work for you, what was that process like? Were you, okay, this is how I'm feeling today. This is my attention today. I'm going to give this one a go with my breath or my body or whatever process you ended up coming to. Was it like trial and error to get to the place where you landed that you felt was really most effective? That's a great question. Um, I started reading book after book and throughout the books, there are many other 
you know, uh, meditations. So I, I wanted to try them all. Um, and through each one, some I liked more than others that I connected to. Um, and, and then the ones that I felt really connected to, I'm like, okay, that's, that's a really good one. And so now I'm going to incorporate it in my own, like my unique meditation. And I kind of molded them together, <laughs> all my favorites. And I'm still, still in the process of doing that. And it really depends on what our intention is that day and who I'm working with, who I'm speaking with. Um, so it really varies, but it's, there, it's endless. Whatever your intention is, your kavana, it's called, uh, it works. You know, if, if like you want to send love to this person right now, it will, you will be sending that light over to them. This energy, this, uh, this feeling it, it's, it, it, it works. It's, it's a natural, um, thing that a human being can do. We're, we're spiritual beings, you know, we're not, we're like between animal and angel. You know, we're kind of like a high. Oh, I love that. That's so nice. That's such a good thought. Yes. Yeah. And God gave us a power that we create positive energy or negative energy. Okay. And, and it's and this energy is potential creation. And you know, we were made in the image of God. Right. So he gave us the, the power to create, just like him. So if you were advising someone on how they should begin their journey, I mean, obviously after we do the meditation, they can, you know, join in with that and see if that's what feels good for them and go from there. But if somebody was just coming to you, not knowing things, what would you suggest a starting place for them on their journey to meditation and learning from Abu Lafia and all these ways to rebalance and center ourselves? First, I would say, start the conversation with Hashem, with God. Um, you know, it could t- it'd just be two minutes two minutes a day, or if you could do a little longer, longer, the better, of course. Um, but just start the conversation, ask for help. And, and then, and then start practicing. First, you sit there, work on your breathing, just like everybody else. All cultures know this, focus on your breath, learn how to get in a state of relaxation. And then once you're ready after doing this so many times, then you could go even deeper. Um, and read the books. It, so many books right now are in English. This is one of my favorites. It's called Meditation in Kabbalah by Ari Kaplan. And it basically gives you like a whole download of Meditation in Kabbalah. And there's a whole section of Avram Abulafia about his life, his biography, and, and his teachings. The Arizal as well. This is a, another favorite. It's called Prophecy and Divine Inspiration by Rabbi Avram Arya Trugman. And this one's incredible as well. Um, And it gives you the the whole download of who the prophets are and their story. And there's also a nice section of Avram Abulafia in here too. I was basically finding these books because I'm I'm searching for more Avram Abulafia um, in English. Uh, But now I'm I'm like trying to really go deeper in his Hebrew texts. Uh, but it, you know, it takes time to to learn actual Hebrew and Aramaic, and it, a lot of his writings are in uh, Ladino. <laughs> so, thank God, uh, this one is uh, he translated the Ladino into Hebrew. So, uh, like uh, Jason has a whole set up there, and all the secrets are in here. I love one- it. I, I especially appreciate what you said right at the beginning that people can start with just two minutes a day. I think a lot of times people are in like almost an analysis paralysis kind of place. And if they feel like, oh my gosh, I have to do this for an hour every day, I'm totally stuck right now. I can't even start. So I I think the idea of starting out slow and not putting pressure in order to gain so much benefit is probably the the most ideal way. And then just sort of build on it from there, right? Yeah, baby steps. You know, you, you don't have to become a prophet overnight. It runs in our blood. It's our ancestry, but uh, we have to be ourselves and be real and, you know, just, just take a few minutes. That's it. No pressure. Right. Take the time to unlock it, I guess, the right way with the keys that we've been given. Um, a, a mentor of mine, I, I always have this in the back of my head. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Right. Like- so a lot, a lot, right? Just, just get there slowly, slowly. Exactly. Um, okay. I Go ahead. What are you going to say? You'll get there. The more you practice, then it's just going to get easier and easier. You'll be able to get into this trance state. And then whatever names you're working with, you'll start seeing the Hebrew letters. You'll start being, you'll have a relationship with them. And then, uh, and then you'll be able to do great things, you know? So it's, it's, uh, it takes time. 
Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I was going to add one piece that. Um, Please. Yeah, I, I, and I think that this is a, a really remarkable thing about Abulafia is that I, I've noticed, you know, maybe in our Western society, it's just stay busy. Once you're busy and you tell people I'm so busy, then, you know, life is in balance because you're so busy. And then in the East, they say, well, just just watch your thoughts and just look at your thoughts, but don't get entangled with your thoughts. And I think for me, it's something I've discovered recently for Abulafi, it is what, what people call the monkey mind or the overactive mind. If you can keep it on letters and names of Hashem and you can keep it running, it's almost like that is the faculty that helps with the prophecy. So when we're driving a car and, and we're thinking about who knows, it's just like a whirlwind of thoughts, right? But you can, you don't have to push that away and say, oh, that's bad. And I just want to have silence. And you don't have to say, well, I just like being busy. You can keep meditating on the letters or the breath or the light. You can use that active part of the mind instead of daydreaming. You can get it to kind of just gently push it towards letters or things like that. So there, there's all kinds of time for practice. Um, and so no one has to think you got to go to a training center, I'm sure, although I'm sure those things are great. But but if we are working our jobs and raising our families, um, you know, there, there is there is a way with Abu Lafia that it, it can be a practice at any time. Right. I think that's part of the beauty of it, too, is that, you know, have time will travel kind of thing. You know, whenever it's fitting, it's it's fine. Work, do the things. Yeah, I mean, he was he was traveling all across right. Europe. I mean, he, he he could not find a home because of his remarkable teachings. He was in Italy and Spain, and Yeheskel could tell us more. He, he went to Israel. I mean, he, he was a man on the move. I mean, he was not sitting in a hut thinking about the eternity of the universe. He, he was on the move and writing and surviving. And, um, and, and he wrote, I think, 26 to 28 books. You know, Yeheskel, did you want to add any piece to that about, you know, maybe sort of daily practice while you're doing your your regular life yeah for sure i mean in, in, i have i have a special sitter i don't think i have it here with me right now but uh it has different kavanot and and yehudim like different uh names of hashem that are braided together and you know each prayer has its own own meditation and it, i i personally i feel it um not not always but most of the time i really try to like like I say a blessing, I want to like, like feel the merging of the two energies and, and flow through me and, and try to do it right. All, obviously in the hustle, hustle and bustle of life, it's, it's difficult to always stay, you know, inspired and in this trance state, but um, on the go, it's, it's so easy to do. Like you said, the monkey brain, you kind of like throw it a bone and let it play with this thing. Well, and, and while doing this exercise, it's actually very, you start feeling this divine influx like flowing through you and you're, you're, you're you kind of got, it's like you're drinking a little coffee and you get like a little, you know, pick me up. And uh, it, it really depends on what your intentions are for like, sometimes I need it for just to get a little more strength because I'm exhausted from the night before my daughter, you know, she was teething. <laughs> and I just like, so this, this name now just gives me a little more energy and vigor. And then, okay, now I feel a little better. And uh, I think, you know, three times a day, like we pray. And um, it's like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, giving us this, this energy that we need, that we, it's, it's our fuel that we run off of, especially being a Jew. Um, like we, we have to do these things to like the mitzvot are not just commandments they're connections and so like it's up to me i'm connecting all these different pipelines and now i could really fully be nourished um and it is it is a, a balance and it's definitely dedication uh it's not not easy to to try to be spiritual in this world at least it, we're, we're in a very physical world um and everyone's always after money and next car and physical things but like it, it's it's it, it's really beneficial if you just sit down five minutes and and really start breathing and and put down that phone just put the phone down <laughs> like you don't need the phone all the time the person who's calling you right now could wait and they'll and when you call them back it's okay you know everything's very instant gratification right now and we just need to just put it down. That's why I love Shabbat so much because you like you're encouraged. Put your phone down now for a whole day now. Don't even think about money. <laughs> it's all gonna work out. Just relax. It, it's you know, it's a livelihood, but you don't let the livelihood take over your life. 
it's to help you live. <laughs> so, you know, the, these meditations are also kind of like mini Shabbats where it will take you out of the craziness and help you balance. And um, yeah, they're straight from our ancestors, from the prophets. So it's, it's straight from God then. And so let's learn meditations from God. <laughs> I, I love it. Um, we need to trademark the term mini Shabbos for this specific purpose because I was literally going to say that one of my favorite things about Shabbos is turning off devices and no screen time. It is the best. Yeah. So I feel you on that. And I'm pretty sure that most of our viewers can understand the same thing too. Um, okay, let's do this. Please help us start our week well, centered and balanced. If you would lead us all in a guided meditation, we would be grateful. Amazing. Okay, so everybody just get comfortable. And whenever you're ready, close your eyes. And take a deep breath through your nose. Release through the mouth. Take another deep breath through the nose. Release. One more deep breath. Continue breathing normally. And every breath that you take, imagine a wave of relaxation hitting you, relaxing your face, relaxing your shoulders, going down your arms all the way to your fingertips, relaxing your chest, your stomach, going down your legs all the way to your toes. Imagine every breath that you take, another wave hits you. And all stress and anxiety all start dissolving away. Feel your body sinking more and more into your chair. In your mind's eye, imagine a beautiful bright light coming from up on high, coming down from the sky, filling up your mind and your third eye. Imagine your mind getting brighter and brighter. And channel this light down to your heart. Feel your heart getting warmer and warmer, being filled with this beautiful light. Bring this light down from your heart to your root, allowing all this beautiful light flowing through your being, connecting your nefesh, ruach, and neshama in perfect unity, aligning your soul and your body. Imagine all this light flowing through you. This light of love, peace, harmony, the light of the divine, God, Now channel this light to all your loved ones. Send it to your parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, friends, the whole entire world. Channel this light through you. Send it out to all of creation. Be 
you have anybody in mind who needs a full recovery, a complete healing, send them this light. Feel the light flowing through you, healing you as well. You're sending it out, channeling it. Orient so the light of the infinite. It's always flowing, it's always there to connect to. All you need to do is call out to the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Whenever you're ready, and you want to ground, just take a deep breath. You could open your eyes whenever you like, very slowly, and have a blessed day. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I feel like I need you, Yechezkel, to like be a podcast, so that way when I ask Alexa to play me some meditations or to like call me as I'm getting ready for bed, your voice is so fitting for that. Thank you so much. Yes, that was beautiful. Thank you. That was very, very well done. And 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 to, Sh to Shoshana's point, there are the YouTube videos of Yesko leading these uh, meditations. You can check his website too. Uh, this is a fantastic session. I, I don't feel like 45 minutes really went by. I was thinking we had, I know. <laughs> we had more time. I know. There are so many oh, more things we could chat about, but that's why our friends should hop on Yesko's website and to keep going on this journey. Yeah, please. Yeah. yeah, I have it up here and I want to share just so everyone can take a look at it. And, and then, yeah, as you're doing that, Jason, Yechezka, we'll all wish you Hatzlacha on your smicha. Is there something specific that you're studying? Yeah, I just finished. I took my final test last week, I'm waiting for the results. Uh, and I did it in Shabbat because Shabbat Yay. is. Favorite. And uh, wow. yeah. I yeah, I'm going to continue on, but like I, I'm going to get Smicha, uh, God willing, I pass. And uh, I, I, and once I do, I'm ready to like bring up a Lafay meditation to the next level. That's a great idea for the podcast. I'm going <laughs> to definitely think right? a lot about that. <laughs> yes, you should. Combined with all the things that you know how to do technically, plus now your methods, yes. spot on. Yes. And if you hold a retreat, sign me up. Just let us know when. <laughs> <laughs> and I just put. Everyone yeah. Yes. Oh my God. It would be beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. And I, I just put the abalafiameditation.com in the chat for, uh, for those who are looking in the chat for that website and, and go ahead. Yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That if you come to the spot, like message me because I give uh, mystical Kabbalistic uh, adventures around the old city of spot. So oh, wow. to do that with you guys and uh, yeah, just let me know when you're coming. <laughs> Amazing. Done. Thank you. Jason, thank you for bringing us such a brilliant guest yet again, who has an, a crazy awesome connection. This was such a special session. Thank you both. You're welcome. Yeah, I want to say, say, say thank you to Shoshana. Thank you for all the uh, folks joining us. Um, my parents, uh, Judy and Martin, thank you for coming. Devorah Leah, thank you for coming. Ed and Waring, um, just um, connected with her through the uh, guest of Avram Leader, who was our guest previous, he had a classes, and Edna actually tra traces her family to Abalafia. So I want to make sure that you both are connected, Haskell and Edna. And uh, although I don't think he's able to say Adupa Avram joined, and we shared this morning that they um, they uh, are, are partners, Adupa Avram in Uganda, formed and was recognized by the country of Uganda, the Beit Abalafia and Universal Language Organization of Uganda. So 
We are making tremendous progress, um, but a, a big part of the progress that we wanted to highlight again for today is that we have Yeheskel Yosef Abulafia, for certain for the name, is doing great work, but on his own individual merit, is doing incredible work, and so we wish you tremendous haslacha spreading the uh, teachings of Abulafia. I think I felt that meditation was fantastic, and I think it came full circle for me because I love the music insight that I have, but I love gaining insight from a great teacher and devotee uh, and, and family lineage of Abulafia on a way to visualize light and have a guided meditation. This is a really important piece. And all of us in the field of Abulafia bring something and can learn something. And um, there's no real one path here. That's, I think that's what I love the most. There's no structured path. There's no group we belong to and there's no organization. And I hope we stay very unorganized. Um, so once again, um, cl closing remarks to thank everyone for joining. Shoshani, just an incredible host. Uh, this would not be possible without you for episode number 10 of the Abulafia series. Check us out, ulr1.com backslash bait, B-E-I-T dash Abulafia. Uh, we also have them on YouTube. I'll be sharing this on Facebook and YouTube. Um, I just wanted to give, oh, I wanted to say one more thing, excuse me, that um, one of the big principles that I, I wanna keep highlighting is there is a Kabbalah out there that is universal, that can be taught to everyone. Of course, we, the Jewish people, we are obligated to the Gemara and Talmud and the mitzvot, um, but, but everyone can study meditation and come close to God. That's what I love about this Abulafi system, the universal part of it, and the emphasis that every single human has a divine soul and, and an ability to connect with their creator. We all have different missions, and we, the chosen people, have been chosen to announce the oneness of God and to fulfill the mitzvot. That's true. We have to do that in our unique way, and, and there's every, every people have their own unique path. So um, I, I just think that that's, that's something I think is, needs to be just shouted from the, to the rooftops. So um, with that, I just wanted to let Shoshan and Yeheskel have final, final uh, words. And I saw some chats here of people saying thank you for coming and thank you for this. And uh, Devorle, thank you very much for your feedback. And Shoshana, I'll turn it over to you and then maybe we'll give uh, Yeheskel final thoughts also. No, absolutely. Just just more gratitude, more appreciation. Um, I so value, Yeheskel, the the visuals that you were sharing with us that really were able to enable me to connect in my mind and, and reach out further and, and share the love. That was exactly what I needed. And I'm pretty sure it's exactly what everybody else and who's going to be viewing it afterwards is going to be able to relate to. And, and we're so grateful. So please, uh, if you would just leave us with some wonderful parting words. Yeah. So just know that everybody could connect to God, no matter who you are, where you're from, uh, what situation you're in, God is waiting to hear from you. And so just literally just close your eyes, start talking from the depths of your heart and uh, just know that everything is okay, will be okay. Everything happens for a reason. It's all for the good. And um, soon God will reveal why we had to go through everything and it's going to be amazing. And it's been prophesized many, many times. The negative prophecies don't even have to you know, happen if we all just connect to God. So let's do that all together. Um, especially Elul is coming and the king is in the fields. The king is literally getting off his throne, going into the fields to come to us. So let's all go connect, go, you know, like I said, just shut down your phone, get off the computer, just, just a few minutes a day. I, I, I say, give yourself, you know, like it, it would be so healthy for 30 minutes, go to the park, just go into nature and start talking to the divine creator and um, yeah, that's that's all I have to say, really. Perfect, and, yeah. perfect Please parting words. Talk. Thank you. Really. Oh, good. We're we're so happy that you were able to join us. Truly, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hesco. An amazing session. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, everyone, for joining Beta Abulafi number ten. Looking forward to number eleven coming up. We'll have the <laughs> guests and all the information, and we'll continue on. Awesome. Have a great week, everyone. <laughs>